Hello and welcome to today's Gartner webinar, the Gartner 2022 HR Trends, Budget, Efficiency and Functional Planning. And now I would like to welcome Gartner Director Advisory, Hannah Nieberg. Hannah, thanks for joining us today. And now I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Akshat. Uh, nice to meet you um, all. And thank you for joining today's webinar again. Um, so yeah, as being said, uh, my name is Hanne. Um, I am an HR analyst at Gartner. I have been here for about 10 years now. And I'm typically speaking to leaders around the globe about how to design their HR function, how to manage cost, and um, yeah, what areas um, they should invest in. Now, it's fantastic to be joined by such a multinational diverse group, and I'm excited uh, to get to know you and your HR functions challenges over the next hour. Um, so in this session, we're going to take a look um, into a crystal ball. So we will check some current benchmarks. We will check data from more than 300 organizations, and you will see where other HR leaders plan to invest their HR budget in 2022 what topic areas are important to them, and also uh, what changes they plan to make to their HR operating model. So you will learn about the budget trends, gain insights into staffing, gain confidence on your spending, and ensure that your function responds to current and future business priorities. Today, I want to share some good news and some bad news with you. And um, I would like to start with the good news. Um, so what you can see here, the good news is HR leaders are planning to increase their budgets. Over the past few years, many of you have been going through tremendous economic uncertainties and needed to make drastic cost cuts. Now this year, we see that most HR leaders are looking to the future more positively and budget plans increase. And by the way, most of them say um, they want to increase their previous budget by 5 to 10% just so you have an estimate to compare your functions budget against. And maybe this is also the time where you want to pull up your 2020 budget plan, um, just have it ready because later on we will look at some benchmarks for budget allocation and you, you will be able to compare your data against your peers. Now, as I mentioned, um, there will be more money to spend this year. And um, now you might be wondering um, what is then the bad news? So the bad news is, even if your pockets are fuller this year, your job is getting harder. One of the biggest recent changes for probably almost everyone on this webinar was working in a hybrid environment. In the second half of 2021, uh, we actually saw that many organizations took steps to get back to normal, reopening offices and encouraging or even requiring employees to work on site. Now, what do you think? I'm asking you, do your employees want to go back to the office Monday to Friday? They really want that? Well, I don't think so. Based on our research, we see that 64% of employees want to work in a hybrid schedule. That is going to the office when they need to, but also being able to work from home. So we need to be aware that the expectations of our workforce is changing. Almost 60% of employees demand flexibility from their employers. And today, flexibility is no longer a differentiator, it is stable stakes. And we see that employee, employers that don't offer flexibility lose their people. At the end of last year, an analysis showed that 4 million US workers quit each month. And you probably feel that already that the bid for talent is even more challenging than it was in the past. Turnover risk arising in a hybrid environment because employees don't feel as connected to their companies anymore. And even worse, there are stronger forces pulling employees away as the pool of potential employers increases. And what does that mean for you in HR? If you lose your people, you will lose productivity. The remaining employees need to cover for the ones that leave, meaning that you will see more burnout, you will lose knowledge, and certainly recruiting workloads will skyrocket. Now, let's move our focus from the market and from HR towards the business. What is happening there? Every year, we ask CEOs, what are your strategic business priorities for the next two years? What are you focusing on? 
And this year, more than 400 CEOs said, number one, we want to grow. Even if we are currently dealing with inflation and economic uncertainties, CEOs want to expand. They are acquiring smaller businesses and increasing hiring goals. And apart from that, we see the business redefining processes and portfolios at an incredible speed, while many HR organizations are reacting too slowly. So again, what does that mean for you in HR? If your company is growing, then most likely your HR function is growing too. And you need to ask yourself, how many people do I really need in HR to serve a growing number of employees? Which roles should they have? And in which operating model can they best work together? Now, back to the CEOs, what do you think? What is one of the biggest levers to enable growth? Yes, technology. Technology is the second CEO priority for this year and the next year. And for a few years now, many of you have been asking us, how can we become more digital? What are emerging HR technologies? And there are great solutions such as robotic process automation or virtual reality, which might play an even bigger role in the hybrid workplace. But sometimes HR technology can be scary at first. For example, our analysis of multiple surveys and client conversations shows that 69% of what a manager is currently doing will be automated in 2024. What does that mean for you in HR? Are you, are people managers becoming irrelevant? No, you are not. I mean, Imagine if your annoying routine task will be done by an app. You have time to focus on strategic questions and you have time to build more human relationships with your employees, which is very much needed because the missing connection to their employer increases turnover, as we have heard before. 